think walking needs an absolute rebrand. And not just the health benefits, lower cholesterol, stronger bone density. It's great. Is it sexy? No. Which is why in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the vain benefits of walking. In this video, I'm going to share with you those benefits and then what you can do to incorporate walking. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. I really create random videos, to be honest with you. This should be random with Rachel, maybe not run down with Rachel. But I love talking about topics where I'm like, why isn't everybody talking about this? Now, I know that you can find videos on walking benefits, but from a vein perspective, haven't seen that yet. Okay, but that's why I'm here. Before we get into the vein benefits, let's just round out the not so sexy benefits. So bone density. Increased bone density is really important, especially as we get older. Increased energy. Who doesn't want more energy? Improved memory and attention. With the TikTok world we're in today, we need all the increased memory and attention we can get. Improves mood. We need all that that we can get. And it is the one of the best and easiest workouts. Much of the time, the reason why I decide not to work out is not just that I'm not motivated, but also that I don't even want to take on the mental the mental load of having to do something complicated or to psych myself up to push myself. With walking, it is basically effortless. Hardest part is just making time for it. Now that we have that covered, let's talk about the vain benefits that I know I am most into. Have you ever heard the term runner's face? It's a term that plastic surgeons often use to describe somebody that does high impact workouts. If you can imagine somebody running, even see yourself running in a mirror, you would see your face feeling the impact. And when you feel the impact, your skin is constantly being pulled. And over time, it affects the laxity of your skin. And that's even where we get the phrase, you have to choose between your face or your, because when you stay lean and trim, oftentimes when you do these high intensity workouts, it can age you, but with walking, you don't have that kind of impact and intensity like you do with running or jogging. And that way, when it comes to walking and aging, walking is in your best interest and would probably be chosen over running, jogging, high intensity. <laughs> Another vain benefit of walking is increased lymphatic drainage. That doesn't sound so sexy, but really what we're talking about is reducing bloat. When I walk a long distance, and I'm walking quite a bit through the week, I couldn't feel more slim and trim. And what's so great about feeling this kind of slim and trim is it's without being overly hungry. Don't get me wrong, I've been slim and trim in my day before, but it came at a very high cost. I was starving, I was always on the brink of binging, I was obsessed with food, I was exhausted. Whereas you can be slim and trim with walking, and not have any of that baggage. Which leads me to the next vain, vain benefit, that walking actually decreases your appetite. There are times, as somebody who is a part of the not so great eating disorder recovery club, which I'm a part of, I there's times where I still feel like I just want to consume everything. It's not from a place of hunger. It's more from a old habits of coping with stress. I sometimes feel pulled to just consume everything. And I've gotten so much better about consciously stopping myself and checking in with what I really need. A lot of times that's water, but one of the biggest things to help in those moods is going outside for a walk. And I find when I do that, and again, I'm, I'm talking about those situations, and if you've dealt with this before, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the situation where it's not so much I'm hungry, but I just want to inhale food and I will go on a walk. But there is also research that supports that walking actually decreases your appetite. Who's talking about that? So, so far we're at the anti-aging approach to exercise reduces bloat, helps you feel slim and trim, decreases appetite. Okay, that would be enough for me. But we have even more by making time for walking. And I mean 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day, you can improve your sleep. So just the other night, a girlfriend and I, we wanted to go to dinner together and we decided to walk to dinner, which was about 20 minutes. And then we decided to walk back another 20 minutes. I texted her the next day and I said, I slept like a baby last night. I think it's because of the walking. And she said, oh my gosh, like a rock. She slept amazing too. And I have found 
Personally, aside from the studies that I'll link below, aside from the studies, I find when I have long walks, I sleep like a baby. So when I travel, I travel for work and I first night in a hotel, I really have trouble sleeping. Maybe I psych myself out that there's a ghost in the room, the bed's not comfortable, all these random reasons for why I may not sleep well. I'm worried that I'm not gonna wake up on time. What I've done to really help me get a great night's sleep that first hotel room night is I will actually make time while I'm waiting for my to board my flight to just walk the terminal back and forth, back and forth. And it is unbelievable how much that's improved my ability to sleep really well in a hotel room, which has been a struggle for me historically. If you travel, if you struggle sleeping, try that out. Get a great walk in, whether that's through a terminal, whether that's, I don't know, in the area that you're staying at, just 20, 30 minutes. Think how easy it is to, to kill 20 to 30 minutes scrolling Instagram, scrolling TikTok. 20, 30 minutes, not a problem. By improving our sleep, we improve our ability to burn fat. That also helps regulate our hormones and, and improve our food choices, food cravings, all those things. Compounding that, when you make time for walking, again, that 20, 30 minutes, maybe you aim for something like 10,000 steps. When you do that, you help balance your blood sugars. I have a few videos touching on this. I if I'm, I'm convinced blood sugar is, is where we're all going when it comes to maintaining a fit and healthy lifestyle. By managing your blood sugar, you manage your cravings, you manage your appetite, you increase your energy levels, all these kind of things that we're seeing with walking, which makes me think that walking, all those benefits are probably, a lot of them are probably driven from managing your blood sugar. With a 20 minute walk, you can decrease your blood sugar spike by 40 to 50%. So a few weeks ago, I had a continuous glucose monitor on and I was managing, I was tracking my blood sugar levels and spikes, which I think everybody at some point in their life should make time for that because you'll see how different foods affect you. Do you need to always have a continuous glucose monitor unless you're pre-diabetic or diabetic? I don't think so. For me, I don't know that I would want to do that, but every now and then I will be tracking it. I could have a meal that had sugar in it, say dessert my blood sugar would spike, right? And when your blood sugar spikes, that can affect your energy levels, what you crave, all these things. It's, it's just a domino effect. But if I would have a big meal, dessert, all, all the things, and I went on a 20 minute walk, my blood sugar spike, I mean, it, it didn't spike at all. It didn't spike at all, all from walking. Now the research is it reduces it by 40, 40 to 50%. But in my case, I found that if I got lots of walking in, my blood sugar stabilized regardless of what I was eating. That's where I think the magic of walking is. Not only is it gentle, but it helps support all these other functions that then have a domino effect in the most positive way. So for those of you who are familiar with me, you know that I do Tracy Anderson Method, um, which is a low impact workout. It's really just been the best workout for me ever, but there's times where I fall off of it and I just don't do it. And I've been in one of those phases. I've been traveling quite a bit. I have I just haven't been making time for it. I go through phases like that. I don't make it a big deal. But in place of my traditional workout, I've been increasing my walking. For the most part, I've been able to maintain my results. I personally think I look even better when I do Tracy Anderson every day, which is just 30 minutes. But to hold me over, walking has been fantastic. I feel good. My digestion is great. Another... I don't know that it's a vain thing, but I, I know that all of us appreciate improved digestion, which walking really helps with too. Um, but it's, it's unbelievable, the endless benefits that really make you feel and look great. But I don't know that it's always presented in that way. So what are some tips for you to incorporate walking to increase your walking? Aiming for 10,000 steps is a great starting point. Even that can be hard to reach. Don't put too much pressure on yourself, but if you have something like an Apple Watch or a Fitbit, which is something I'm looking into, I hear the Fitbit has a lot more benefits than the Apple Watch. I'm looking into that one. But if you can aim for that, if you can track that, great. You may even just, if you have if you have a dog and you walk in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, you can, you can really build up those steps really easily. And it's amazing that by putting in just a little bit more effort, how far it can go. Like I said earlier, walk, making time to walk after a meal, that's where you're going to get most bang for your buck. 
because it's really going to help you stabilize your blood sugar, which has this domino effect of positive benefits. So so if, if you and I are meeting at lunch and I'm just talking at you about how excited I am about walking and you're like, ah, I don't know that I want to take that on, but what's where can I get the most bang for your, my buck? I would say that would be walking after your meal. Then you can do other things like park further away from a building that you're going to. That's a great way to build in steps or take the stairs over the elevator. Or if you are working in an office building to use the restroom on a different floor and take the stairs. All those great ways to just kind of habit stack in more steps. You're going to the bathroom anyways. How can you tack on more steps to that trip? And then get up and walk around during the day. I have a standing desk, but there's times like lately I've not been using the standing desk. When I do, I find tremendous benefit from it. I have a little video on that too, but I've been making it a point to move around, take a call mobile, go on a walk while I'm on a call, a call that I don't need to be in front of my computer. Those are all like very simple ways to just build in steps and also take inventory of how you feel. Do you notice that you are in a better mood? because research supports that more walking can help you improve your mood? Do you find that you are making better food choices because studies support that you reduce cravings and you reduce your appetite by walking? Do you just feel slim and trim and better overall? I can tell you that walking does that for me. Whereas times where I would do intense workouts, I was convincing myself it was best for me and it was going to get me to the vain place I wanted to be but actually it pushed me further away. Those intense workouts caused me to eat more, caused me to crave more. And it wasn't until I was forced to take pause on those workouts and walking was my only option that I fell into this. I have a whole video on that. I will link that below too. As with every video, my intention is to provide you some food for thought that can really help your lifestyle, that's really helping my lifestyle in a way that's really practical, because I'm all about practical. If you have tips for incorporating walking in your day, or if you have something that you found walking's helped you with, a benefit, vein or otherwise, that I didn't mention or did mention, please share in the comments below. As with every video, I can't thank you enough for watching, for commenting, for liking. It makes a big difference, and I am just so thankful to have this outlet, and I really appreciate your kind words and support. So with that, I hope you have a fabulous week, and I hope to see you next time.